okay so the next one is exercise 15 i may look a bit drowsy today because i have taken antidepressants i have mild depression so sometimes i have to take it anyway so the exercise here is about an abelian group g in which we are considering a subset h namely the subset consisting of those elements in g whose orders divide the integer quasi we have to first of all prove that this h is a subgroup of g and then the second part of the exercise asks us about this number 12 is there anything special about it can we replace 12 by any by some other positive integer and if so then we have to state the general result so let us see the solution so in the solution we in the beginning itself we refer to this second corollary to theorem 4.1 corollary to to theorem 4.1 implies that for any element g in the group g order of g dividing 12 is equivalent to this equation g satisfying the equation x to the power 12 equal to the identity element in the group so our set h now becomes the set of those elements g in g such that g to the power 12 is equal to e since e to the power 12 is e we have e belonging to h and hence h is non-empty h is a non-empty subset of g next let g and h be two elements in h then g to the power 12 is identity and so is h to the power 12 from this we have g h to the power 12 equal to g to the power 12 times h to the power 12 and this step is justified by the fact that the original group is abelian now using our hypothesis both of them are equal to the identity so their product is also the identity and what about the 12th power of g inverse that using uh, one of the rules of exponents can also be written like this so this is e inverse which is again e hence 
both GH and G inverse belong to H. Proving that H is a subgroup of G. Now from these arguments you can clearly see that the number 12 does not play any role other than the fact that it is a positive integer. So clearly the same arguments work if we replace 12 with something else, some other positive integer. And uh, the general arg result is this. From above, we clearly see that twelve can be replaced by any other integer uh, I mean any other positive integer and the general result is there in this exercise 40 uh, where is it exercise 45 of chapter 3 So there this solution ends. Let's move on. Then 16. Find a collection of distinct subgroups. distinct subgroups of Z240 which are of course as we can see cyclic subgroups A N of Z240 with the property that they form a chain like this. The first one is properly contained in the second one which in turn is properly contained in the other one the next one and it goes on like that the cyclic subgroup generated by a n is the one which contains all of them inside of it it's the largest in this chain that 
okay with the property that these things are true these inclusions are true but there is another condition with n as large as possible that means the chain should have as great a length as possible and the solution goes like this since this is cyclic which we already know because a uh, groups of this type are always cyclic these are additive groups modulo some integer these are finite cyclic groups and the order of a subgroup of a cyclic group order of a subgroup of a cyclic group divides the order of the original cyclic group and this is coming from uh, theorem 4.3 and theorem 4.2 theorem 4.3 is the fundamental theorem of cyclic groups and there is that other theorem 4.2 also by So what is our conclusion at any stage the order of this cyclic group divides all of the orders of the higher cyclic groups. The one generated by ai plus 1, the one generated by ai plus 2 etc up to the order of the one generated by a n now to maximize the length of this chain obviously we have to take the smaller one to be the smallest possible one and the uh, largest one to be the largest possible one it is clear that we should take this to be the trivial group consisting of only the identity alone. and by the way the identity in this uh, because we are in this modular groups so the if you want you can write the identity to be zero but it does not hurt to write it in this general form it has the same meaning in fact it is nothing but the cyclic subgroup generated by 240 now in the group z240 240 actually is the identity element it's equivalent to zero or in fact in this group it is equal to zero so this is the trivial group consisting of the identity 
and the largest one should be taken to be the entire group. This however is generated by the smallest possible integer one in the group. Okay. Now to maximize n, to maximize n, we must let a n minus one. to be one of the prime divisors of 240. What is the reason? Say we denote it by some symbol also say p1 because if a n minus 1 is not prime if it is composite then its order that is the order of this element a n minus 1 in the group c 240 will be less than its order if it is prime because if this is an element then its order in z240 is the order of z240 divided by this element so that's why the smaller the element becomes the larger is its order and that's why you see this is the largest possible element in z240 i mean of course you can say it's also equivalent to zero but for the sake of this argument this is the largest possible 240 so the subgroup it generates is the smallest that is because 240 has the smallest possible order being the identity element in the original group it has order 1 however the element 1 is the smallest possible element but it has the largest possible order its order is so large that it becomes equal to the order of the original group and so it ends up generating the whole group so the smallest the element is the more uh, the larger the cyclic subgroup it will generate and this thing is following from again the fundamental theorem of uh, cyclic groups c theorem 4.3 in fact in theorem 4.3 you see the second part where we are given that if a is an element of order n then the cyclic subgroups of a are precisely those i mean for every positive integer in say k is a positive i mean positive divisor of n say k is a positive divisor of n then there exists exactly one cyclic subgroup of order k in this cyclic group and that cyclic subgroup is 
the one generated by this its order is k so from that part we are getting this idea so a n minus 1 should not be composite it should be a prime that of course divides 240 Similarly, the next lower one a n minus 2 should be the second smallest possible in terms of being or uh, I mean in terms of being composite. The first one is the smallest possible in terms of being composite in the sense that it has to be a prime, it is not composite. In the second one, we want to keep it as small as possible. So, you will have to have, I mean the a n plus 2 will have to be a multiple of p1 because of these relations. Okay. So it has to be a multiple of p1 but the thing with by which you will multiply p1 that should be smallest possible. So that uh, will be another prime that divides 240 and by another prime we don't necessarily mean a prime different from p1 but just another prime which is available in the factorization of 240. If P1 is available in the factorization of 240 more than once, then you can take P1 also again. So that A n minus 2 will be P1 square or you can take some other prime uh, P2. Whether that P2 is equal to P1 or different from P1, it does not matter in this solution. So similarly, A n 2 is P1 times P2 where P2 is a prime divisor of 240. Now things The factorization of 240 is this. Oh, I should have already done that. Hmm. 240 can be written as 8 times 3 times 10. So from here I will get 1, 2. So 2 to the power 4. Already we had 2 cube here times 3 times 5. Okay, the things 240 is 2 to the power 4 times 3 times 5. We must have we must have what? N should be at most 5 plus 2. Five plus two equal to seven. What is the thing here? You see, we how many prime factors are available here? Counting multiplicity, two is available four times. Then one more, five, and one more, six. Okay, now. We are not allowed to take, of course, uh, six of the primes because if we do that, then we will get 240 itself, and that will give us the 
trivial subgroup that we don't want so we will at most consider five uh, I mean what I am trying to say is this we are uh, going on considering a n minus 1 then a n minus 2 and each time we do uh, we are considering these numbers we are adding one more prime adding means introducing one more prime so this we can do a n minus 1 has one prime a n minus 2 has two primes a n minus 3 will have three primes where these are some primes from among these primes okay they are not necessarily distinct they are just some primes which are available in the factorization a n minus 4 will be four primes a n minus 5 will be 5 primes now whatever these 5 primes are from this these primes we cannot introduce one more prime because if we do that then we will get uh, in the next stage a n minus 6 equal to 240 so that will give us the trivial subgroup consisting of only the identity element and also at the same time note that we have chosen a n minus 1 to not be 1 because we have already reserved uh, that one value for a n so that a n generates the cyclic group z240 the entire group so a n minus 1 should generate a smaller cyclic group so we cannot take 1 here so we had to take p1 had we taken instead of p1 had we taken some composite if uh, see we have uh, argued here if a n minus 1 is composite then it's order as an element in z240 its order will be less than its order if it is a prime and that follows from theorem 4.3 that second section where we have that n by k and those things okay so a n minus 1 must be p1 and to maximize the number of such things the next best thing you can uh, do is p1 p2 and then it goes on like that so how many possible intermediate elements are we getting which are giving us cyclic subgroups that are neither equal to the trivial group nor equal to the, i mean neither equal to the trivial group nor equal to the entire group one two three four five combining them with the other extreme groups the trivial group and the entire group we thus get the fact that n should be at most 7 in that chain the number of elements should be at most 7 or the number of subgroups should be at most 7 so that's why 7 is the largest possible length of that chain and there is in fact a chain where this number 7 is attained. Note that in the following I should not perhaps say chain at this stage because the word chain has a, is a technical term in the theory of partially ordered sets. Let us just simply call it a sequence. Note that in the following sequence, sequence of subgroups, 
the number n equal to 7 is attained. And the sequence is this. Two forty. Then this is properly contained in forty eight, which is properly contained in sixteen eight, then four. One which is that two forty itself. Had we taken any other form of number a n minus one other than this uh, L prime, then the length will shrink because what will then happen? So this is our a n minus one. No? This thing is our a n minus 1. a n minus 1 in this case is 2. In place of that, had we chosen something else, say not necessarily 4, but say 3, because in the factorization 6 is available, then the order of that element 6 in this group will be less than the uh, I should not say less than no it's greater than the order of 2 so that the cyclic subgroup that 6 will generate will be larger and that uh, eats up room it leaves lesser room on that side for the other subgroups to appear. It reduces the number of subgroups that is possible on that side. So that is why this has to be chosen the smallest possible. Then this is the next smallest but always keeping in mind that once you have introduced one prime then you have to multiply that prime by something else because of these relations okay the order of this has to divide this that's why the order of this has to divide this so ultimately uh, taking everything into account we have got the largest possible value of n to be 7 and in fact that is attained by this series or sequence of groups. Then exercise 17. If you are still having some doubt about this solution you go to theorem 4.3 look at its statement uh, specifically the second part of the statement carefully and try to make sense of this sentence if this is composite then its order in z240 will be less than its order if it was prime once you understand this, then it will become absolutely clear. Okay. So next, exercise 17. Complete the following statement. What is the statement? 
A is some element in some group. Its order is equal to the order of A square if and only if order A then we have to fill in the blanks, fill in this blank. The solution is quite straightforward once you know which result to apply. By corollary 2, to theorem 4.2, The order of A is equal to the order of A square if and only if one possibility of course is that if order of A is infinite then order of a square also has to be infinite. If and only if order of a is infinite or if it is finite then of course order of a square will also be finite and The greatest common divisor of the order of A and this exponent 1 which appears here, I mean you cannot see that but it is there, is equal to the GCD of the order of A and 2 if and only if. order of A is infinite or what is this? This is equal to 1 and that is equal to the GCD of the order of A and 2. Now obviously if order of A is an even integer then the GCD of order of A and 2 cannot be 1 because 2 is at least dividing both of them. So that means this implies order of A must be odd. So we continue if and only if is infinite or odd. So that is the missing part if and only if order of A is infinite or odd. Next. Exercise 18. If a cyclic group, uh, this is an interesting one. If a cyclic group has an element element of infinite order, okay. How many elements of finite order does it have? I 
handmade ink. How many elements of finite order does it have? Let G equal to this be a cyclic group. Let A to the power I belonging to G have infinite order okay suppose a has finite order If possible, suppose the element A itself, which is the generator of, which is A generator of G, is of finite order. Then, A to the power N is equal to E for some positive integer N. But this implies a to the power i whole to the power n using one of the rules of exponents is equal to this which is equal to this. This contradicts the hypothesis that this has infinite order. So our supposition is wrong. That is, A must be of finite order, uh, I mean sorry, infinite order. Then A must be of infinite order.
now it's easy to show that every element of a to the power uh, or in fact um, every element of g minus e has infinite order because uh, if you take any element in g minus e this we are not making a part of the solution because the argument is somewhat like this if you assume that a to the power j has finite order because that's how a typical element in j will look like where j of course is not equal to 0 then there will be a positive integer such that this is equal to e now since n is a positive integer and j is non-zero using the rules of exponent you get this now you, we can conveniently choose j to be positive if j is negative then take inverse on both sides and again apply the rules of exponent so you get a positive integer j n uh, now that j and n are both positive such that this power of a equals e and this contradicts the fact that a has infinite order so that's why our original choice a to the power j also must have infinite order it cannot possibly have finite order the only element in g that has finite order is the identity element whose order is 1 so the only element of finite order in G is E but the order is 1 that we need not however write we already know that okay so this is 80 then exercise 19 list the cyclic subgroups of u30 u30 consists of those positive integers that are less than 30 and relatively prime to 30. We know that the elements in u30 are these. So we have to avoid uh, even integers and in fact we will get these elements 1, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19 because 15 also cannot be taken 3 is a common factor 23, 29 1 can verify that the
distinct cyclic subgroups of u30 are these seven turns out to be a generator of u30 u30 itself is a cyclic group no this how can it be okay so this is the trivial group this is seven and 13 is another generator for the cyclic group which turns out to be the inverse of 7 in this group and we know that in a group an element and its inverse generate the same cyclic group and that comes directly from the definition of a cyclic group because in cyclic group we just consider all integral powers of a given element so whether you consider the element or its inverse ultimately since we are going to consider all integral powers that the exponents can be positive negative or zero so the sets are identical and then the cyclic subgroup generated by 11 then the one generated by 17 which turns out to be the same as the one generated by 23 because 17 and 23 are inverses of each other in u30 and then two more 19 and the cyclic subgroup generated by 29 so these are the distinct cyclic subgroups in u30 The procedure for obtaining these subgroups is quite easy and straightforward. You just calculate uh, the cyclic subgroups generated by all the elements. Some of them you will see are identical. That's it. Nothing more complicated than that. Okay, then so this was 19 then 20 suppose that G is an abelian group of order 35 And every element of G satisfies the equation X to the power thirty five equal to identity prove that g is cyclic does your argument work if 35 is replaced with 33 
to uh, people who already know about something known as Lagrange's theorem. This exercise may seem a little strange. The hypothesis that is given is in general true, not just for cyclic groups. But then from the given hypothesis, how can you prove that in any group of order 35 is cyclic? We will see how, but the arguments that we will use will not work in the case if we replace 35 by 33. So let us see, let, oh, so already it's given that G is an abelian group of order 35. Hmm. By the hypothesis, each element of G Each element of G has order one, five, seven, or thirty five, and this follows from again theorem. 4.3 Suppose every element Suppose every element of G that is different from E has order 5. What happens if all non-identity elements have order 5? Is it given to be an abelian okay okay yes it is an abelian group mm. has order five okay then any element A belonging to G minus E belongs to a subgroup of G of order five and that subgroup is nothing but the subgroup generated by A itself. Since A has order 5, so the cyclic subgroup generated by A will also have order 5 and will definitely contain A. Now let H1 and H2 be two subgroups of G of order 5 that are distinct. So two different subgroups of G of order 5. 
Now we already know that if we take the intersection of two subgroups that is also a subgroup Now H1 intersection H2 is a subgroup of both H1 and H2. Okay. If this intersection is not equal to the trivial group, then there exists an element G belonging to this intersection such that G is also not equal to the G is not equal to the identity. But now according to our supposition, G being a non-identity element and after all being in the original group capital G must have order 5. Now, the cyclic subgroup generated by G has order 5 and naturally because G belongs to the intersection of H1 and H2 so the cyclic subgroup generated by G will also be contained in H1 intersection H2. This implies that this is contained in H1 and it is also contained in H2. Since the order of this is equal to 5, which is equal to the order of H1 and is also equal to the order of H2, we have This is a contradiction to the distinctness of H1 and H2. So the contradiction is stemming from here that their intersection is not the trivial group consisting of only the identity. So our supposition is wrong. 
that is we must have h1 intersection h2 equal to identity so if we have two distinct subgroups in g each one having order 5 then they intersect trivially only at the identity element so how are the elements in the original group going to look like we have identity here somewhere in the original group and every element g belongs to a cyclic subgroup that has order 5 in fact belongs to a subgroup that has order 5 namely the cyclic subgroup generated by g okay that means the entire group is actually a union of such subgroups which uh, where each one has order 5 and they intersect trivially um, if they are distinct so what does that say it says that g is a union of such subgroups h where order of h is 5 now can you gauge the order of g from this union you see the sets that are involved in this union are not disjoint so the order will not be the sum of the orders of the ages however there is one element common so what happens is this the order of g can be calculated like this since we have one element common and see nothing else is common if you consider two different ages like what we have done here h1 and h2 then the only common thing between h1 and h2 is e because the intersection is that in h1 you have besides e four other elements in h2 also you have besides e four other elements this there is nothing common uh, between these sets of four elements you can do the same thing with other five element subgroups each five element subgroup gives us four new elements in the original group and the original group consists of uh, such subgroups so that means what that if the number of such subgroups is k then the order of the group is 4k plus 1 4k uh, four elements from each such subgroup k none of which is equal to the identity element plus that extra identity element but it's given that the order of g is 35 but the thing here is that 35 is not a number of the form 4k plus 1 so let us write these things systematically thus if say a is the set of all h such that h is a subgroup of g of order 5 then 
g is equal to the union of h such that h belongs to a from this we get order of g is equal to order of okay we can write like this summation order of h minus e where of course the summation varies over all h coming from a plus 1 this makes sense because if we remove E, then in the remaining parts of the H's, they are disjoint. So that part we can write as a sum. Okay. And this is equal to 4 times the number of elements in A, that is the number of subgroups of G of order 5 plus 1. So that means order of G is congruent to 1 modulo 4. Thus, order of G is congruent to 1 modulo oh i should not write congruent one modulo for because this has not been defined no? instead i should write like this order of g mod 4 is equal to 1 that's how we are writing things in this book however thirty five mod four thirty five mod four is three actually which is not equal to one this contradiction shows that our Supposition is wrong. What was our supposition? Our supposition is that uh, was that G has uh, elements such that every non-identity element has order i. That is wrong. Supposition is wrong. That is. every non-identity element of G cannot have order 5. So, every non-identity element In, in G has order either 7 or 35. If we find an element of order 35 then our job is done because it will generate the whole group proving that the group is cyclic. If we find an element of order 35 then we are done so assume that g has
some element a of order 7 now whatever we did with 5 we can do a similar thing with 7 similarly one can show that all the non identity elements elements of g cannot have order 7 exactly similarly one can show there is some element in g of order 5 or 35 again if we get an element of order 35 then we are done so as the um g has an element b of order 5 now we have an element a of order 7 in g and an element b of order 5 in g then ab is an element in g of order 30 this shows that g is cyclic so in any case g will be cyclic the above arguments don't work if order of g is 30 3 because for 33 the primes are 3 and 11 and you will see that whatever we did there uh, that 35 not being of the form 4k plus 1 that type of argument will not work here so that's why uh, this case has to be handled separately by some other means anyway we were just asked to mention whether whether it works or not and it does not okay then exercise 21 let g be a group and a b an element of g there are parts to this exercise part 1 
a if a to the power 12 is equal to e what can you say about the order of a part b if a to the power m is equal to e same what can you say about the order of a then part c Suppose that the order of G is 24 and that G is cyclic. If a to the power 8 is different from the identity and so is a to the power 12, show that a is a generator of the group G. Okay. The first two parts are extremely straightforward. Part A. What can you say about the order of A? Order of A divides 12. In this case, uh, to actually show this, what you need to do, let me say, if it is not already following from some uh, result from the text. I can't remember exactly. The strategy for showing that in this case order of a divides 12. You see order of a by definition is a positive integer. It's the least positive integer which uh, satisfies uh, that uh, equation. Now you divide 12 by order of A. You will get a quotient and a remainder where the remainder is a non-negative integer and it's, it is strictly less than order of A. Now what you do, you raise A to the power 12. You will then have this on the left hand side this is equal to e it's coming from uh, what is given to us the hypothesis on the right hand side you use the rules of exponent to write the power as this product this is identity by the definition of order of a so you end up having a thing like this, an equation. Now note that r is a non-negative integer for which this power is equal to e. So r is either positive or zero. But due to the minimal nature of the order of a, r cannot be positive because if r is positive and this power becomes e, then order of a is not the smallest positive integer for which the corresponding power of a becomes e. So that is a contradiction. So 
the minimality of order of a forces us to conclude that r is equal to 0 but then if the remainder is 0 then the order of a divides by so that's how we get this result just like that in part b order of a has to divide m because this arguments this justifications don't really uh, use any uh, anything i mean anything any fact about 12 which is special to the integer 12 here we are just using the fact that 12 is a positive integer such that this equation is satisfied that's all so 12 can easily be replaced with any positive integer m and the same arguments work okay now part c suppose that g is equal okay So, neither is a to the power 8 identity nor is a to the power 12 identity. Okay. So, what do we need to show that this is the case? Namely, we need to show that the order of a is exactly equal to 24. And for this, we just, yeah, again, we can use theorem 4.3. And we are able to use theorem 4.3 because G is cyclic. Since G is cyclic, Theorem 4.3 implies that the order of G is either 1 or 2 or 3 for all the divisors of 20, for all the positive divisors. We now need to rule out the cases, these cases one by one and uh, we need to show that the order can only be equal to 24 and in doing so, we should use these conditions since This is also not equal to E. We already have this. So these numbers are ruled out immediately. Also, okay, what else is given? Also, since e to the power 8 is definitely equal to e, a is not equal to e, and hence order of a is not equal to 1. So, this number is also ruled out. Okay. 
Now, how can we rule out the other numbers? If we assume that order of a is 2, then a square will be equal to the identity okay a square will be equal to the identity oh yes if order of a is 2 or order of a is 4 then a square is equal to the identity or a to the power 4 is equal to the identity. In any case, we have a to the power 8 which can be written as a square whole to the power 4 is identity and if that is the case, Again, we get contradiction. A contradiction. <coughs> so, we can't have that also. So, now two and 4 have also been ruled out and because of that 6 is also automatically ruled out. In fact, we could have written it here itself. Um, also, if a to the power 6 is equal to identity, which of course is coming from the hypothesis that from the supposition that the order of A is 6, then again a contradiction. is also rolled out and since 6 is rolled out so 3 is also rolled out if order of a is 3 then a cube is identity which implies So, it is also not equal to 3. We have now ruled out all the possibilities. Thus, I mean all the possibilities that we don't want. Friends, G has 24 elements we thus have this that's what we wanted to show let's do one more 
exercise twenty two. Prove that every group of order three must be cyclic. solution let g equal to e comma a comma b be a group of order 3 where e is the identity element We will now focus on the element on the product AB. Since AB belongs to G because A and B are in G, so by the closure property, AB also has to be in G. AB is equal to E or AB is equal to A or a b is equal to b these two cases are not possible by the cancellation laws in any group a b equal to a implies b equal to E and a b equal to b implies a equal to a none of which is possible So, we must have AB equal to E that is B equal to A inverse. Now look at the elements of G. Uh, in fact, let's write hence. g equal to e a b where e is a to the power 0 a of course is a to the power 1 and b is a inverse so all the elements are integral powers of a and hence clearly this is generated by a thus G is a cyclic group. So let's just uh, keep the ex I mean the solutions to, uh, to this stage itself. Uh, we will continue in the next video. Um, so until then, I mean next Galleon video, until then it's me, Lucifer from a mathematical room. If you have anything to say about these things and um, I feel the solution to 
exercise 16 hasn't been really that satisfactory. Uh, more elaborate explanation could have been given in the solution. However, the solution is sound. I am saying that because it's not my solution. Okay, I got it from somewhere uh, where they have in fact written an elaborate solution but that is extremely confusing. So I came up with this somewhat shorter explanation. So it may look incomplete but actually it is complete. So I uh, want you to go through it carefully and if you still don't get the point then we can discuss it once more in the next Galleon video. You can let me know in the comment section or you can mail me also here in our usual address. So that will be all in Galleon uh, tonight. So until the next video, this is me Lucifer from a mathematical room. Have a nice night.